everybody. Hello, it's, it's Peter Hopkins here. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, music at DLD College and I'll give you some, a little bit of a sample of, of what we do in the classroom. Uh, so it's lovely to meet you and I hope I can meet you uh, in real life at some point. I'm just going to show you a little bit about the structure of most music courses first of all. So I'm just going to share that with you. Um, you can see now, this is how most music uh, courses are structured where, where you have a majority of it is, is uh, academic study so we teach a bit about music history uh, so uh, I've, we tend to focus on classical music from 1750 to 1900 so that's the 40 percent and part of that also we look at other aspects of music such as musicals, musical theatre, uh, DLD is right in the centre of London and we can actually walk to many of the the big famous theatres and see these famous musicals like Les Miserables, Phantom of the Opera. So in that 40% we have a sort of a, a good mixture of popular music and classical music. Uh, then you can see 30% is performing so we expect all students to be fairly good performers. Um, we're not saying they must be expert performers when they come to DLD but they, we obviously train them to be very proficient by the end of their courses whether it's GCSE or IFP or A level um, to actually be, be good performers. So that's 30% and it can go up as much as 35% uh, for A level music. And then the other aspect is composing. Uh, so students often have to write two compositions and that's at all levels, whether it's GCSE music at 16 or the International Foundation Programme, which is a one year course at DLD or A level music. So you've got a good mixture of uh, disciplines there. You've got the academic side to music, you've got the uh, performing, and you've got the composing creative side to it. Um, so many of our students from the Far East have very good uh, skills on piano, for example. So we're, we're, that, that's often a, a great advantage because uh, for A-level, uh, uh, playing on an instrument is 35%. So if, if you're a good performer, that means you're you know, almost halfway uh, to getting a good result um, in, our, in our courses. Um, but at DLD, we have uh, about 10 visiting staff, or music teachers. So we've got two piano teachers, uh, one of whom is a jazz specialist, and he's quite famous and he broadcasts on our Radio 2 and he has uh, uh, albums uh, uh, published, etc. Uh, so there's, there, currently there's a, there's a bit of a fashion for jazz. So um, that's even the Far East, there's some students who want to actually learn how to play jazz. So that's good that we've got a teacher that can focus on that. We also offer lessons in singing, of course. Uh, we've got a woodwind teacher who teaches flute, uh, oboe, clarinet, saxophone. And also he's got a bit of a jazz uh, influence as well. Uh, we have two guitar teachers, uh, one of whom is also a, a bass player in a jazz trio. It sounds like we're a jazz college, we're not. We just happen to have, just by coincidence, by chance, we have these, these experts. And then we've got a uh, violin teacher, of course, cello teacher, all the main instruments. And if we have students who, who want to do an instrument that, that we haven't got a teach for, teacher for, we can actually get a teacher for those. So making music, I'm gonna show you some videos of concerts and things at DLD that will give you a little, little idea of what we do. But performing is very important. Um, right, so I'm going to stop sharing that screen and I will start sharing, showing you a little bit about life at music at uh, DLD. Um, one of the great things we've done recently is that we're, we're resident to the Re uh, Regent's Brass Band. So the Regent Brass Band is like a, a semi-professional uh, band uh, that's all brass instruments. So we're talking about nearly 30 instruments. Uh, and so we, since last September, they actually use our college to rehearse, which has been really great. Um, so I'm gonna show you a, a video of, of them performing and I'll just, I'll just explain to you why it's good for the college. Well, one of the biggest reasons is they can offer brass lessons to our students and students can actually take part in the band. The second big thing, great thing, is they can actually uh, perform our student compositions. So first of all, I'm just gonna show you a, a video of this group. So let me find this, hopefully I can find it. Right, so, uh, and the, the brass band recently uh, 
did this uh, since lockdown. They did this video and they mixed it at home. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So really happy that we have this uh, band in our, a, a rehearsal in the theatre every Thursday. And it's a great resource that we're gradually making more and more use of. But certainly if there's any students out there who have ambitions to play trumpets, trombones, tubers, euphoniums, French horns, uh, we're certainly the, the college to go to. I think it'd be really, really good for them. Um, so I was going to show you some more things, aspects of what our students are doing. Now, one of my students, uh, she's actually from um, South Korea. She wrote a piece for the brass band for A-level composition. And the brass band were going to actually perform this. Uh, I just want to show you what she did. Hopefully you can see this coming up. So, right. So you should be able to see some music in the keyboard there. But this is written by one of our students, Jimin, uh, for classical quartet. So it's a trumpet, horn, tenor trombone, tuba. So uh, she wrote this. Um, now the band were meant to record it, but obviously because of lockdown, they couldn't. But I'll give you a little preview of what it sounds like. <laughs> go and this, this is the software that we use. We use Sibelius so all students uh, whether they're GCSE or International Foundation students or A-level they use Sibelius because it's, uh, it's the best uh, score writer in the world and Holly, Hollywood uh, film composers use it if they're composing for orchestra and it's so flexible. Uh, so for example if I wanted to change that trumpet you know I can sort of edit the music like that Okay, so you can start doing all sorts of strange things. So. There you go. So, it's for, so once you learn it, students become really, really proficient uh, at composing music. And the great thing is you can actually hear immediately what you've done creatively and you can delete bars. So I can delete that whole bar. Uh, you can create parts as well for the players to perform. So it's a great piece of software especially if you're writing sort of more classical music. Now for other students, uh, we use um, Logic Pro. Obviously not all students want to write in a classical style, so the courses are very flexible. So if you want to write um, dance music or music for a rock band, uh, that's all absolutely fine. So I'll play you a piece of music by another student, which is a different style. Uh, and this student actually went on to perform uh, live on radio, BBC Radio, uh, last year. So uh, the, there, there were two A-level students that did really, really well, uh, create, set up a band together, and then were actually performed on uh, BBC Radio. So this is uh, an example of his composition from last year.
Hi, Peter. We lost a bit of sound there. Okay. I hope you could hear that. Um, so again, so we cater for all sorts of different styles. It, it's certainly not just a classical uh, music college or jazz. We, we try and teach all sorts of music, like film music, um, uh, music from South America, Latin American music, etc. So let me just show you some other things now. Life around the, the college. So I'll share some more stuff with you. Uh, hopefully find the right thing here. So... So we are getting there. So I'm going to show you different aspects of the college. Right, so this is, um, you'll see a video now of um, last winter concert. This is 2019 December. And this is one of our extracurricular activities. You can, you can do band. So we have a band club. Um, and sometimes it actually is two bands because we have lots, so so popular, we have to create two different bands. So this is the band club performing in our winter concert last uh, December. <laughs> So you can see the students are really enjoying themselves and that's something that's very important to me is that music should be not only something you know reaching high attainment but it's something you should really enjoy um, as well as, as studying very hard um, now the quality of sound isn't very good there because actually when we do a concert at the college um, it's more important to have good sound quality for the audience in the college than it is for the recording uh, and we're, we're all used to high quality recordings. When we listen to music, you know, in our car or whatever, we're, listen, we're listening to music that's been recorded in a studio, but very, we don't often listen to music that's actually recorded um, elsewhere. Uh, we also do uh, A-level recitals as well. So I'll show you some examples. Of <laughs> a student from China uh, two years ago playing a very 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 difficult piece as you can see it's actually uh, I think that's a theme from a Chinese film that one but very ambitious piece um, we have students from all around the world so we've got um, this is a student from Serbia or, or who's singing a song <laughs> So she's singing a song that, that is Serbian. So you don't you don't have to if you're a singer you don't have to sing in English. You can you can sing in your own language. That's fine. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so at the DLD College, if you're a music student, there's lots of cross curricular activities. So we have you saw the band club. Uh, we also have a ukulele club, and I'll show you our ukulele club. You can see them rehearsing in the music room there. That's the ukulele club. And we invite all people to join that, whether, whether they're musicians or not. So we've got members of the staff are playing. Uh, we have students that aren't studying music taking part as well. So we also make sure that music is uh, available to all students, 
students can be studying physics, chemistry and biology, but they can still, still join in the music department. Right, another activity. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a bit of a music tech lesson. So just to uh, recap on our qualifications, we do GCSE music, which is performing, composing and a bit of history. We do the International Foundation Programme, which is a one year programme for overseas students. Um, and after that year, it will qualify you to do music at university. So it's only a one year course. And the, the exam is a, an adaption of A-level. It's a simpler exam uh, and it relies less on language. So obviously it's designed for students just coming to England who aren't able to write extended um, essays in English. Uh, and also you have intense training on your first and second instrument. You also learn Alexander technique for the foundation program, which is how, how to breathe properly, how to stand properly. Um, you also do compositions as well, of course. Um, but the foundation program has been very successful. Uh, every student has passed uh, with merits and distinctions and students nearly always get their first place. So if they, if they have an ambition to go, to, for example, to Royal Holloway, they will get to Royal Holloway after a year on the foundation program. So that's been a great success. Um, we also do the traditional A-level course, which is over two years. So it's like the IFP, but it gives that extra time for students to develop. Um, and one of our students has recently been accepted into Berkeley in Boston, which is extremely competitive. Um, so it's very hard to get into Berkeley in Boston. It's a, obviously it's a famous music course. Um, and we're very happy that our, our student was accepted there. But uh, so far, all our students have been accepted in their first choice of institution. Right, so apart from GCSC, our International Foundation Programme and A-Level Music, we also offer BTEC uh, Music Technology. So BTEC is a, a qualification which is equivalent to A-Level. Uh, it can take one year, but we teach it over two years like a single A-Level. And uh, the difference with A-Level is you, you, you gradually do the coursework. So it's not one big exam at the end, you're doing modules probably one or two per term. Uh, and it's uh, also more business based or more industry based. So BTEC Music will prepare students to do courses uh, in studio work, recording, uh, music producing, that sort of thing. So I'll just show you a clip of a, a class going on. Yeah, and intro. Yeah. Repeat that again. So you've got eight bars. And then you're gonna have a drop coming up. Three, five, four, three, two, drop. There. Alright. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, headphones in. Yeah, that's but, nice. Yeah, what? but the EQ levels aren't. I don't worry about the EQ yet. Let's <laughs> just, just get the stuff in. That's too long, Carboy. I know. Yeah, he's excited. Yeah, that's it. need a melody on top. Drums. Yeah, drums. What's that? No, that does, no, doesn't work. Ticket, 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 ticket. No good. Sorry. That's You're trying too many things. You're trying to be like experiment. Yeah. yeah. Have two, three, four really good things and then repeat them and then shorten them and then make them longer and shorten it. Drums in, drums out. Uh, piano in, piano out. Yeah. And work in every four section, four bars. Something new. At the moment, everything is too new. If you ask me to sing the, I think, wait a minute, we had five things there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's my colleague, Yanis, who's the specialist music technology teacher. Uh, and he teaches in the basement of the college. So it's a sort of, obviously, soundproofed uh, unit. And there's also a professional studio attached to that classroom. So to, to the left of that picture, you'd, you'd see a, a mixing studio. So an another one of our activities, uh, cross-curricular activities, is the, the Music Studio Recording Club. So that's on a Thursday uh, and students have access to an expert who can actually help them 
uh, record their tracks or teach them how to use music technology. Um, in the basement area as well, we've got three practice rooms. Uh, we've got about five pianos, uh, acoustic and digital, and we've got a grand piano as well in the main area. Okay, um, I'm now going to show you um, Canvas. I don't know how much you know of Canvas, but Canvas is our virtual learning environment and it's something we've, we've been using increasingly a lot and especially since the current current crisis the coronavirus crisis it's become absolutely essential to, to teaching lessons um, and my faculty the creative arts faculty we were one of the first faculties to actually use this system really properly so i thought you just might want to see what we do here um, so on the screen now this is what canvas looks like for students and basically it's a way of them seeing resources um, and also not only resources but doing assignments quizzes and giving in work so this is also our mark book as well so if you click on grades everything is will be automatically marked from the students so it's um you know you, so you've got a record of all the students what they've done over the year um, but this is the sort of thing I do uh, in, in most of the courses, IFP, A-level. So uh, this is a song from the musical West Side Story by Bernstein. So I'm teaching them a bit about where, where the Puerto, Puerto Rico is where the, the, the musical is set in New York, but the, the people are Puerto Ricans. Okay, so I'm showing the students where Puerto Rico is, uh, which is quite buried there, isn't it, somewhere? somewhere here um, and I, I I write down the lyrics as well the words of the song because a lot of the students are coming from other countries so it's very important for them to see the words there uh, we've, so we, we make sure they understand the words uh, and then of course we play them uh, the, the link I'll show you your studying music theatre we will look at that song and we'll, we'll discuss the origins of the style of music so the Latin American origins we'll talk about the composer Leonard Bernstein who grew up in America with jazz and hip-hop etc uh, and then we'll analyze the music so I don't know if any if any of you out there can read music but this is this is what it looks like so uh, students will learn about the, the rhythm so you've got the the tempo to say, so it's da, da, da. So you've got this Latin American beat going on there. Um, and then you've got musical examples. So you've got. Uh, so I can play the piano to students and show them, they can learn how to play the rhythms. Um, so all this is to help them understand how, how music is created. And then on canvas, then I, I do a quiz. So at DLD, I'm quite famous for, for being a, a quiz expert on Canvas. So, um, and the thing is, when you say quiz, it sounds very 
too simple. It sounds like a very basic quiz, but actually you can make quizzes very sophisticated um, and, and, and not easy at all. You, you can make them stretch students. And also the quizzes are great for revision. Um, so uh, if, if a student, for example, is, is too unwell to come to the class or perhaps is in China, they can still do all these uh, work on Canvas and do the quizzes to keep them fresh with the subject. So you've got all these answers here and things like that. You can do multiple choice, you can do free answers. You can, you can, even, you can set essays as well. Uh, and the great thing is Canvas will mark it. Uh, it won't mark everything, but it will mark um, all the sort of simple answers. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, and over Easter, I created a, a, a new quiz, which was on pop, jazz and Latin music. The reason I did that was because a lot of students from around the world um, haven't got a general knowledge about popular music. So I created this quiz just as a way really of um, making sure every student would actually um, have a basic understanding of popular music. And that will really helps in all sorts of music exams. Uh, I'll give you an example. So they listen to this track, And then they've got the questions like the track it so it says the track is in jazz funk style the lead guitar and you've got options it is playing licks it's strumming it uses distortion pedal it's doubling the pace part now those words you probably won't know but hopefully at dld the students will will have been taught those words uh, and even if they don't know those words in the quiz it will it will then encourage them to find out what those words actually mean now uh, if, if, if I could talk to you, I would ask you which of those, is it A, B, C or D? And I'll play it to you again, so. Now, so the question is, is it A, B, C or D? And I, I bet some of you out there know the answer, yeah? Let's see, let's see if you know. Um, how many of you chose C? Well, C is the correct answer. Okay, so well done if you chose C. Okay, now we also look at, of course, uh, classical music and uh, surprisingly students really like classical music. Um, we always think that students aren't very happy to study music that's not pop or, or whatever, but I, I find that students are often very open-minded about classical music. So again, this is another page from Canvas and you can see it's, it's very multimedia, uh, very colourful. Uh, it's got YouTube videos, it's got links to other sites. Um, so it's very informative and great for revision. So, so everything, I, everything I teach in the, in the class is backed up on Canvas. So if they can't understand what I'm saying, um, you know, if I'm speaking too quickly, they can always go back and look at the page on Canvas. So I find it so useful. Um, and it's great to have everything in one place. Um, and again, you've got uh, class exercises. So this is one on Mozart. So for that, that exercise, uh, it's a very popular piece of music with students, uh, Mozart, uh, G minor. So I actually asked them to make up their own questions for that uh, piece of music. So they might ask questions like, um, what instruments play the main melody? Uh, what chord is playing in bar two? Uh, things like that. Or what, what's the structure of the music? How's the music put together? And they create questions and then we put those questions to other members of the class. So we, we always make sure the learning is very active. Uh, and of course, instruments are all important instruments. It's so important to know your instruments. And that's something you can pretty easily learn, I think, when you come to Britain, is, is learn the English names for instruments. So that's, and then I do a, a quiz as well, of course. So the quiz, they, they would have to name what those instruments are. So that's all very straightforward. 
Uh, students have to be aware of, of different sorts of human voices. So, I, so again, they can, just, they can see the word alto, low female, and they can click on. And actually, that's a female voice. An alto can actually be lower than a tenor. So it's, they have to know, be aware of all those different kinds of voices. And also, in pop music and rock, you have falsetto. Okay, so that's cool. That, that is a male voice, but it's, it's the artificial voice that uh, a lot of artists do. So you can see this is how our, our courses are designed. So um, you can see every course at DLD has a home page uh, and has modules. Uh, these are like, like chapters in a book, you see. So um, if students want to learn a little about rhythm, they can click on rhythm, of course, uh, instruments. Uh, melody they can because often if you think about it describing a melody is quite difficult if you say you know da 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 you know how do you describe that how do you put it into words so that's the biggest challenge for students around the world even even British students is how to put it into words how to analyze music so all these things are very useful in describing uh, music so you've got lots of things there um, and every class has its own uh, course so a level year one they will they will and they can see this on their mobile phones as well so sometimes the students are actually allowed to use their mobile phones and they can do quizzes and they can research and revise and things like that but it's very very useful um, so I'm just going to stop sharing for a second so there you have it. So just to summarise, um, we've got the GCSE music, which we, we teach in two years, but it is possible to do it in one year in some cases. We do the A-level music course, which is the, you know, the, the, the traditional one over two years. Uh, we do IFP, which is in one year only. Um, and we do the BTEC music course, music technology over two years. Um, and apart from BTEC music, as I said before, it's 40% uh, exam paper analysis history it's 30 percent performing uh, and it's 30 percent composing and that's pretty much the structure of most uh, music qualifications uh, we have these extra curricular activities or cross curricular activities we've got the ukulele group you saw playing we have uh, a choir we have the dld choir we have the band club uh, we have the Music Studio Recording Club. And another thing we've started is the DJ Mixing Club. So if you want to be a DJ, we have a course where you can actually learn to play the, the, the decks. And uh, sometimes we have a club night where students can actually be the DJ for the night. So that's quite exciting. And then, of course, we've got the, the Regent Brass Band, which is this great resource that can be used um, at any point uh, by students or if they want to take part in the bar, brass band or if they want their compositions to be performed by the brass band. Um, so I think I've given you a pretty good overview there. Uh, and I think I might hand over to, to John at this point, if that's okay, and I can answer questions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Um, I haven't actually got any questions posted at the moment. So you've obviously I've answered everyone's <laughs> question in, right. in your talk. Uh, but okay. if anyone would like to post questions, or if you do want to unmute yourself just to ask any questions to Peter, please do now. Um, one question I had was just in terms of the music students, how would you um, encourage them and what advice would you give them to kind of um, gain practical experience? What are the opportunities do you think for them in London to sort of- Oh, well, oh, yeah, of oh, oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously London is full of opportunity. Uh, and one of the things we, we uh, invite students to do is open mic events. So open mic events are run in, in pubs, clubs, um, theatres, where anybody can go on stage and perform. 
So, so the, the student that actually got into Berkeley, he did a few of those um, uh, activities where he actually got on stage in London and performed. Uh, and of course, there's lots of professional music studios. Um, and ju just being inspired by actually going to, on concerts, there must be more music going on in London than almost any other city. Um, so our students go to jazz clubs uh, and they get obviously go to musical theater. Um, and also we bring in experts as well. So, you know, people who are actually quite famous in music, uh, they come and give inspirational talks to the students, give, give them links. Um, and also we, get, we go on visits to theatre. So in January, we, we, we went to see Mary Poppins and we met, we went behind the stage. We, we met the stage manager. We met some of the uh, performers as well. Uh, so it's really by inspiring students, by being in a, in a great city, really. Excellent. Okay, Excellent. thank you, Pete. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I mean, lots of opportunities, as, as, as you can imagine, in London to, to get involved in music and uh, an incredibly creative centre of the world. But um, Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in terms of university destinations as well, obviously, um, I'm guys, I'm seeing a few people trying to post questions, but I can't actually see the questions. So um, if you could if you could post them maybe in the Q&A section, um, I don't know if any of my colleagues are able to see the questions yes. that are being posted. I could see one. Uh, I can see some questions here, so I'll, I'll just address them back, back to front. Um, Thank you, Pete. So, yeah, so, yeah, so one of the questions is, would you take students without solid music knowledge to a foundation course? I think I would. I think the most important thing for the foundation is, can they sing, can they play music? So if they, if I, if, if they sent me a video of, of them performing and, and I thought they could gain a good mark as a performer, I would then take them on as a music student. Uh, so we're looking at roughly about grade six standard um, uh, of performing. And that's roughly where you get after about five years. But for IFP, I always view the videos first. OK, so that's really my criteria. And if they're, if they're good enough, I will offer them a place. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, and then what other subjects do, another question is what other subjects do uh, A-level students take? Sometimes they also take BTEC music. So they, they're doing two music courses. They do the technology version and the A-level, uh, which is more biased towards classical music. Uh, also students uh, take art, uh, graphics, fine arts or photography. Um, currently my students are doing lots of things, economics. So my, one of my A-level students, she actually wants to go to University College London to do economics, but she's doing music as well. Um, music is a very prestigious subject. Um, uh, if, if, for example, Cambridge University uh, highly regard music uh, because the students tend to be very assertive, analytical, uh, sociable because they're used to performing with other musicians. So it's a very prestigious A-level. So it can get you onto a variety of courses. Just carrying on um, your, answering your questions, uh, are they supposed to have a kind of portfolio? So the portfolio is, in effect, um, recordings of performances. So it's two performances up to about 12 minutes and a portfolio of two com compositions. So they have to produce a score and audio. Uh, the rest of the examinations is, is a written timed exam in June. Uh, so that's that one. And minimum level of music knowledge for GCSE level. I think for GCSE, I've had people completely um, a beginner level um, because we have small classes and because we have lots of private one-to-one -one tutors it's quite possible to get a student from a to z um, uh, within the time frame uh, it would be great the minimum level would be great that students can read notation so they can they can actually see treble clef and and are able to read the notes on the treble clef uh, for gcsc as well some performing ability the standard grade is about grade three for, for GCSE. So if your students have been perform, performing for about two years uh, or minimum one year, they should be okay to do a music GCSE music degree. For A-level, a bit more, you know, perhaps performing for four years. Um, but again, I always view audition videos. So, so that is really the, the way I can guarantee the quality of the students is by looking at them performing before offering. Uh, any more questions, anybody? 
I can't see the oh yes could you the software yes it's Sibelius S I B E L I U S Sibelius um, and that's more for writing music uh, for arranging music um, uh, sequencing we use Logic Pro Logic Pro which is the Apple Mac software so we have Apple Macs in the music department Okay. Peter, I just had one question from the Q&A from Tatiana. She's just asked, um, do um, students need to provide their own musical instruments, bring their own musical instruments, or does the, does the college provide? Right. Uh, well, not, not necessarily. So um, we have lots of guitars, for example. Um, but if a student's obviously seriously into performing on a guitar, they will put, buy their own guitar. Uh, if For violin and cello students, we often uh, rent uh, instruments. So saxophone as well. So the answer to that is flexibility. Um, <clears throat> we would like students to have their own instruments, but we can always rent or provide them with instruments. Really? Okay. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Um, unless we've got any more, I'm not sure if I can see all the questions that are coming through the chat. But if, if that's all of them, and I think we've answered all on the on the Q and A yes. um, section, um, I think we'll 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 kind of call that a conclusion to the to the event today. Right. Um, oh, hang on. It's a, it's a taxi on. I said thank you. So I thought I saw another question pop up. Um, thank you very much, Peter. Um, really appreciate your time. Really enlightening to learn more about the music programs at DLD. Um, so uh, we we have recorded the session, and you will be able to see a recording of this, guys. So when we send it round, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to ask them when you get that email, and we'll we'll, we'll put them to Peter and his colleagues and, and get those responses to you. Uh, but I think for from our point of view, we'll we'll say goodbye. So okay thank you well, very much thank you peter yeah bye bye everybody hope to thanks. see you in life bye <laughs> thanks very much bye bye everyone